This is a video of a motorcycle alternator that can be used off of the motorcycle for uh, hydropower. It might also be able to be used for windmills, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm building this for hydropower. We have some, uh, some property in Palawan that's got a water canal on it, an irrigation canal. And it's got quite a bit of uh, good flow of water, but we have no electricity there, so we're kind of off-grid by necessity. So I need something that will charge some batteries to, uh, to give us power in our house. So this is just what I was able to put together. We're in the Philippines and motorcycles are very common here. And parts are cheap, but everybody says you should use permanent magnet alternators or permanent magnet generators for, for this kind of stuff. That is better than a car alternator, but nobody even knows what a permanent magnet alternator is here. Uh, so they're, they're pretty much impossible to find. So I decided to try a motorcycle alternator. I'm making the video because nobody else on the internet has done this or at least posted a video of it. There's one guy who built one just with some in picture instructions and showed you how to do it, but he never tested it. So I don't know what it'll do. So we're gonna hook it up to the motorcycle and actually run it and uh, test the voltage on it. What I've got here is, this is, I think it's off of a 125cc, something like that. This is a rotor. I think it came off of a Motoposh uh, brand, some sort of a Chinese motorcycle, 125cc. And the, uh, the stator in here is, I'm told, is from a Honda XRM 125, uh, basically a Honda Cub. Um, the, the base is just whatever kind of scrap metal I could put together. And it had to be braced here and here because otherwise otherwise it was it was moving like that with a magnet so you really got to brace it and when it moves um, because the tolerances are so close you can start scraping but the way it is right now it doesn't scrape it just it just run, runs free uh, these pillow blocks are about four dollars a piece here uh, the shafting cost me um, twelve hundred pesos well about probably about fourteen hundred pesos or something which is I don't, I don't know, about $20 or something, had a machine shop do it. They had to take one end of the shaft and kind of narrow it down like a pencil, drill a hole in the end of it, put a key slot in it, and also drill a hole in this end. So that gives me a good shaft. Uh, the um, Underneath the pillow blocks, I've got the nuts done like this so that I can, so that I can raise and lower the pillow blocks to get it just right. And there's a little bit of play in the mount, mounting holes right here so that you can slide it side to side. And also the holes are over drilled here and here so that you can get everything centered up just right. If you don't have it centered up right, it won't run right. Um, but that's not terribly hard to do. The motorcycle shop was able to uh, take the four wires coming out of here, uh, cut off the pulsator, which they said that I don't need. And apparently I don't. They told me that the, the green is the ground, the two yellows are the power, and you can actually hook it up without the voltage regulator on it and just uh, a voltmeter to the two yellow wires and spin it and, and it, it makes the needle move. So that's apparently correct. Uh, so they've just, um, they've just got the green attached to a ground somewhere and uh, that they hooked up the voltage regulator, voltage regulator for me. This is just a basic cheap Chinese bike voltage regulator. This is the power here, so all we would do to hook this up is just connect this to the positive and then um, connect the negative battery terminal to, uh, to this right here, or just really just anywhere on here, but this is what I'm using for the ground. Um, before I hook it up, I can show a couple of these. This is what I'm planning on using if, if I can get enough water pressure. Uh, Pelton wheels here are pretty much unavailable. It's hard to get things from eBay. It takes a long time and you never know what will happen with customs. So I just built the best thing I could. Uh, this is a concrete cutting wheel, uh, PVC pipe, and got the tops of bottle caps shoved down in here. And this is a very close tight fit. These bottle cap tops don't move. So it gives it a, a nice little pocket for the water to go inside of. And uh, hopefully this will spin it. But with a garden hose, it won't. A garden hose doesn't give enough pressure. But you can take this nut off here, and take off this, this sprocket, 
and this will fit in its place and look something like that. And this is what you would use just for a, uh, something like a tilting wheel arrangement. But right now it's set up for a, um, for a chain drive. And this is just the, uh, the front sprocket for a, um, something like a 125cc bike. Uh, and this is, this is just, a, just a motorcycle sprocket. Um, if you want to drive it with a, with a, a uh, water wheel, then you could use a motorcycle chain drive and use this. Uh, or, if you want, you can use something like this on the end. I had the, had the end of the shaft uh, drilled and tapped for this. This is some sort of a metric 14 millimeter something or another. I just got this from a uh, motorcycle uh, junkyard, basically. Uh, this will thread in here in place of the bolt and sprocket. And you could, you could if you wanted to, do some sort of an arrangement where you have a gear like this and then another gear like this. These are all motorcycle parts. Um, if I do do a, uh, a water wheel arrangement with this, I'll probably, I'll probably just use the chain drive. But um, uh, just showing this in case anybody wants to get any ideas. The insides of motorcycles have got a lot of cool gears for a lot of interesting things if you want to get into all that stuff. Anyway, let's, uh, let's hook it up. Right now it's putting out uh, about 13 and a half to 14 volts. And uh, yeah, this is actually run a test light, but that, that's all it's actually generated. So I tried higher RPMs and it never gets above about 14 volts. So the voltage regulator does appear to be working and doing what it's supposed to do. Um, If you do try this at home, make sure that you've got your hand out of the way of this thing because it will hurt quite badly if it uh, if, if that smacks into your finger or something like that, which I haven't done, but um, just in case anybody wanted to try that. Uh, so it looks like this actually would work. Um, my guess is that this would put out something like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 amps or so. Uh, 20 amps at 14 volts is 280 watts and if that's 280 watts going 24 hours a day every day and you don't have a lot of electricity needs this is this could run a small off-grid house or uh, just be a supplemental power source and the whole thing cost probably about uh, 60 or 70 dollars total to put together uh, pro probably a little less than that the reason that I'm, one of the reasons that I'm doing this, and I know that I can, you know, somebody might say, well, you can get, uh, you can get a permanent magnet generator or something off of the internet, you know, from some sort of source, or you can build one out of an AC Delco generator, and yeah, yeah, that's true, you can, you know, if you're in America. Uh, getting that.